<laughs> Never get tired of that. All right, everyone, so welcome back. Hope you had an absolutely fantastic week. Today, I'm gonna to do another wheel build video, but this one is gonna be a little bit different. Instead of just going through all the details and showing you step-by-step -step on how to build a wheel, you know, I've already done that. This time, I'm gonna see how quickly I can build a wheel, and I'm actually gonna do it in real time. There's not gonna be any cuts or any skips. I'm gonna build a wheel from absolute scratch to a finished thing, all in this video. The other day, I actually asked on my Instagram account for some questions for you guys about wheel builds. So as I'm doing this, I'm gonna split the camera into two and one half is gonna be building the video uncut. The other half is gonna be me answering some questions on, yeah, just wheel build tips and hints. Okay, because this is potentially quite a long video, I may as well start the build right about now. And while I'm doing that, I'll let you know what equipment I'm using and I'll also answer these questions which I got sent on Instagram. So let's get on with it. Now, if you do want to know how to build a wheel from start to finish, step by step, then I highly recommend going and checking out my video I did last year on that. It's had nearly 150,000 views and I get comments on that quite regularly from people saying it's really helped them. People who have never built a wheel before have managed to get a nice strong wheel after watching that video. So it's gonna be up there. I can never remember which side because the screen's reversed, but yeah, go check that out. It'll also be in the description below. Now, speaking of that wheel build video, this is actually the wheel that I built in that video and it's still going strong. That was nearly a year ago. It's a carbon fiber rim from Light Bicycle, which you know I was a bit nervous about riding a carbon fiber rim for trials use, but it's been absolutely faultless. I've not had to touch this wheel using aluminium nipples. I've not had any issues and yeah, it's been 100% reliable. Okay, so for this build, I'm actually gonna be using the front Chris King ISO. I just built the rear wheel, which took me 25 minutes, which is actually a little bit slower than I'd hoped. So I'm gonna try building the front wheel, which traditionally is a little bit slower than a rear wheel, but we'll see how this goes. If it's faster, we'll use this build. If it's slower, I'll use the other build. Firstly, the hub. This is a Chris King ISO single speed hub. These are known to be super reliable, probably the most reliable hubs you can get handmade in America. Every single bit of this is made in their factory, including the bearings. The quality of this is just unreal. And if you want something that's gonna last 10, 20, 30 years or more, Chris King is the brand to go for. Now it does actually have fewer engagement points than the Industry 9 hub I was using before. And people have asked me, you know, why the downgrade? Now the Industry 9 has proven to be completely reliable. However, their new Hydra hub has, was it 600 engagement points? Something crazy like that. And I'm sure that is gonna be reliable, but for me, I don't want to go and try unproven technology. And especially when often the more engagement points you get, the weaker they become. Chris King have their own unique drive system. And actually the more power you put into it, the stronger it gets. All 72 engagement points engage at exactly the same time. So once this thing has engaged, it's not gonna skip. Rim wise, I'm going for a light bicycle carbon rim. This is the Recon 26 inch model. The actual code is RM26CO2. Now this is a little bit narrower than I'd normally ride at 30 mil from the outer edge to outer edge. The previous rim I've been running was 38 mil, which is great for trials and skate parks and stuff. This, however, has a much shallower rim, which will make a much quicker wheel build. As usual, I'm running sapping double butted spokes. These are my favorite spokes. I don't think I've ever snapped one. Uh, they are just super nice spokes, do the job really, really well. And I went with black just to make it a little bit pimper. Now, like my previous wheel build, I've gone for alloy nipples. This time I've gone for Halo branded ones. There are probably plenty of brands out there that will do just as good a job. Last time I just ordered some off eBay. I can't even remember what brand they were and they've been absolutely fine. I actually snapped one on my front wheel. So they are a little bit weaker, but I still think you can build some really, really strong wheels, even potentially stronger wheels than with brass nipples. So yeah, I do recommend alloy nipples. Maybe not if you're riding in the mud. Okay, the tools I'm using today, I'm using the Park Tool stand. This is the TS2 model. I got the base for it just the other day and I've used this for years. I've had this for God knows how long now and it just works faultlessly. I love this thing. 
This is expensive though, you can get cheaper models. I've not used any other ones, so I can't really recommend them. I don't know what's good and what isn't. I do know the part tool is good and I can recommend it. Like I mentioned in my last build, I really like the spokey spoke keys. These have a little bit of flex in them so they don't hurt your fingers quite so much. And they have the workshop model which has actually a double length steel bit. So you're less likely to strip your nipples using one of these. Also like last time I'm using a sapin nipple twister. This thing's basically a modified screwdriver and it just allows you to tighten that spokes down initially just super quickly. So makes wheel builds a lot quicker. Speaking of making wheel builds quicker, I also have a sapin nipple holder. This thing is ideal, it just lightly holds onto the nipple, then you can just put that through the rim and it's less likely to get dropped and lost within the rim. So not vital, but pretty handy if you're building wheels quickly, or especially if you have really deep profile rims and you need to get the nipple quite far in there. So great piece of kit. Now in my last wheel build video, I got a few comments from people saying, oh, you didn't use nipple prep or you didn't use spoke prep or you used the wrong, Ugh. You know what, it, wheel building isn't black magic. As long as you're lubing the nipples and spokes, it doesn't really matter what it is. And speaking of, I found this thing on Amazon. It's got a really narrow end. I can just dab a little bit of lube in there and that will be absolutely fine. Lastly, I have a Park Tools TM1 spoke tension measurer. Uh, this thing just lets you know if your spoke tension's all even, you just apply this to spokes, it'll tell you how tight they are, and you go around and just make sure they're all even. Now this thing, again, isn't vital. Uh, you can just tap on the spokes. If you've built enough, you can go for just from the feel. And yeah, this thing does help, but it's not vital. Right, now that I've explained all of the equipment, it's time to get onto some of these questions. Okay, so I've got quite a few of the same question here, and that is, how do I calculate the correct spoke lengths. And I'll tell you the truth, I don't. No, I probably could. There are plenty of online spoke calculators online. However, I found a lot of them proved to be inaccurate. The most accurate spoke calculator I found is the one at Tarty Bikes. I used them for any time I need to get some spokes. They built their own calculator and it is absolutely fantastic. Nick Peterson has asked, how do I get even spoke tension without a spoke tension gauge? Well, normally I do use that. However, often if you just do completely the same number of turns on a wheel, that will get you roughly the, like, the same tension on every single spoke. Obviously you need to true the wheel, which will throw them out a little bit. That's when you can either pluck the spokes just to try and uh, get a bit of sound. You can hit them with a spanner and they'll do a ting. And often, you know, if you've got one that spokes that's loose, it will have a much lower pitch than one that's too tight, which will have a much higher pitch. So it's not like super science accurate, but if you don't have a spoke gauge, then it's a pretty good way to know you've got even spoke tension throughout. Anthony Luo5 has asked, what is a good spoke tension? He's trued wheels before, but tension is like guesswork. And yeah, it can be like guesswork. I've built quite a few wheels and I just kind of go by feel. Now I'm gonna get super unscientific here, but basically when you squeeze the spokes together, I like it so it just they ping and it, it's not like a crrrk, it's just a ping, ping. <laughs> so that's um, one way to gauge if you've got the, the correct spoke tension. Often if it's a, a non-dishless wheel, uh, you'll have slightly different tension on one side than the other. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty tricky one to answer. One thing I'll say is if your spokes are able to squeeze more than a centimeter, I'd probably say that's a little bit too loose. Trial Tech has asked, have I ever cracked a carbon rim while running tubeless? And no, I haven't. Simple as. Dale Thy Snail has asked, what is the difference between a tubeless rim and a normal rim? Can you make a non-tubeless rim tubeless cat compatible? Um, okay, a tubeless rim won't have any spoke holes. So it will have some other system that will allow the spokes and nipples to uh, attach. So yeah, a, a completely legit tubeless rim is completely sealed. However, most rims these days do have holes for nipples and spokes and a lot of people do run them tubeless. So yes, you can run a normal rim tubeless. 
you just have to tape it up. Now there are loads of brands out there that do tubeless kits and tubeless specific tape. However, I just find Gorilla Tape works as good as anything. So yeah, if you've got a normal rim, a layer of Gorilla Tape should make it tubeless compatible. Callum Irvine 26 says, what to do if it all goes colossally wrong? Okay, I've built plenty of wheels which have gone completely wrong. Either I've like, put the spokes on the wrong side or I've messed up my cross pattern. Uh, and yes, yeah, sometimes it does go completely wrong. And the best thing to do, start again. Completely take out all the spokes and start from a, a fresh page. It's pretty tedious, but at least then you, you're not trying to find exactly where the mistake is. It can get pretty confusing. Starting afresh gives you the best chance of getting it right from the start. Joan Lee Zero asks, how do you rectify it when the wheel is egg shape, but still in true? Okay, yep, yeah, so getting a wheel straight and true is pretty much the main part of building a wheel. However, what about the up down trueness? Well, to be fair, that is rectified exactly the same way you would rectify a side to side trueness. If it goes up, the spokes are probably too tight, so you need to loosen them. If it's going down too far, they're probably too loose, so you need to tighten them. And obviously there's gonna be a middle ground there. So if you've got the rim going too high there and too low there, then where you need to be is probably in the middle. So you need to loosen the ones that are too tight and tighten the ones that are too loose until it gets to that middle point. And that's how you fix the up and down eggness. Morgan Pedley has asked, What's the best way to replace spokes without scratching the rim? And yeah, that's a legit question. It is pretty easy to scratch a rim when replacing a spoke. I know I've done it. I know other people have done it. It is really annoying. There's not really a absolute guaranteed way of doing this. It's not exactly like you can go and wrap tape around the end of the uh, spoke before you take it out. What I normally do is just really make sure I bend the spoke enough to clear. Now spokes um, steel, they can bend probably more than you think and straighten out completely fine. So yeah, don't be shy. As long as you don't put a sharp kink in the spoke, you can bend it more than you think and just completely bend it out the way so you're not hitting the rim. That's probably the best way to do it. Callum R. McNichol asks, is there a way to lice a wheel without the hassle of bending the spokes around each other? There isn't really any way to build a wheel without having to bend the spokes. Unless you build a wheel radially, then that's literally going straight from the hub to the rim without crossing any of the spokes. However, that is way more stressful on hubs, so not always recommended. However, if you watch my previous wheel build video, I think the way I do it in that video is probably the best way to reduce the number of times you have to bend a spoke and how much you have to bend a spoke. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I reckon that's probably the best way to reduce how much you have to bend the spokes. Phil Rossetti asks, why don't I use nipple washers? Um, I've never really found that I've needed them. I have had some people say that, you know, carbon fiber against aluminum can cause the aluminum to corrode. So it's probably worth using, you know, nipple washers there. But for normal wheels with brass nipples, it might make the wheel slightly better, but with, if you're building a wheel properly, you're stressing it, you're letting the nipples untwist, then I don't really think it makes that much difference. Robertson Sonderman asks, could you choose between two, three, four cross, or is it fixed with the wheel set? Um, yeah, you can choose what cross you want. It's not dependent on the wheel set. However, it's not always possible to get the correct length spokes for the cross that you want. For example, my last wheel build I did on my channel, I actually built that four cross rather than my preferred three cross because I couldn't actually get the correct length spokes for a three cross. So yeah, you can choose what cross you want, just check you can get the spokes in the length for it. Angus Burnside has asked, straight or J-bend spokes, what's better? Well, in theory, straight should be better because you're reducing a slight stress area of having a bend in a spoke. However, I've never actually personally used straight spokes before. Uh, I've only ever used J-bend and I've not actually had any issues. So yeah, in theory, one should be better, but in practice, they're probably both about the same. I do think potentially building wheels with J-Bend is a little easier, although without actually building a straight spoke wheel, you know, I don't know that for sure. So yeah, I prefer J-Bend just because that's what I'm used to. All right, my pal Ron Mountainbike from India, he's asked, is it good to put brass nipples? And yeah, brass nipples are great. Like I've said, 
at the start of this video, I'm using aluminium for this build. That's because I do find I can get tighter spokes with aluminium. Uh, I've explained this before. It's basically because aluminium is a little bit softer and any imperfections can get mushed out of the way rather than you know hard steel or brass against steel. Any imperfections cause friction and it actually starts to get a little bit tougher to turn the nipple when the spoke tension gets higher. So yeah, I find I can get tighter spokes with alloy. However, if you are riding in wet conditions, in mud, in rain, aluminium does corrode. So I personally wouldn't build a bike that's gonna be riding in wet weather, salt, you know, mud, any of that. I wouldn't build that bike with alloy nipples. I would actually use brass for that appliance. Phil Chase Bike Nerd has asked, the different ways to lace up a wheel. Now there's actually just so many ways to build up a wheel. Like there's some pretty wild ones like snowflake patterns. I've seen people use chain rings in the middle, uh, in between the flanges on the hubs uh, with separate spokes going to those. However, the most like common ways to build a wheel would be radial, one cross, two cross, three cross, and four cross. Now you probably could go to five cross and more, but it's starting to get you know really dependent on your hub and rim setup. Now, radial is kind of how it sounds. That is literally the spoke going straight from the hub to the rim. Uh, that is a great one for side-to-side -side stiffness. Uh, not so good for twisting forces though. And it also puts a lot more force through the hub because it's pulling on just a small bit of aluminium and you can snap your flange. Uh, once you add a few crosses, the spoke actually pulls quite like, sideways through the flange against quite a lot of aluminium and it actually makes it quite a bit stronger. Now two cross, three cross, four cross, that's pretty much as it sounds. That is the number of spokes you are crossing before you get to the rim. Now, normally three cross is the most common. That is the best compromise between uh, radial stiffness and side to side stiffness. Now one cross, two cross and four cross, they're a little bit rarer and probably only really used if you're a bit of a weight weenie, you're wanting the shorter spokes for you know, less steel, lighter weight, or if your rim and hub combo doesn't allow for three cross. So those are a few of the spoke combos. Oli Kern asks, how do you know if you're over under tightening your spokes? Now with wheel builds, I always recommend tightening just like quarter or half turns at a time. Certainly no more than half a turn once you start getting you know, towards the end of the wheel build. Now you can normally tell if your spokes are under tensioned because you don't have much resistance against your spoke key. You find if your wheel is over tensioned, if you're really starting to struggle to turn the spoke key. If at any point, you know, you're really having to force the spoke key, they're too tight, back off, start again, and yeah, make sure that they're, they're not getting overly tight. Liam McBride 77 asks, and this is actually a pretty good question, what makes a strong wheel, a compliant wheel or a stiff wheel? Yeah, that is actually a really hard one to answer. Personally, I quite like a stiff wheel, certainly on the trials bike, so I'm getting like really strong feedback when riding. However, stiff doesn't necessarily mean strong. Now saying that, obviously my wheels have been pretty strong. They've lasted pretty much a year of trials abuse, doing 11 foot drops pretty much every month at shows and under rotated spins. So a stiff wheel can be a strong wheel. However, you kind of do want a bit of flex in there as well. It's a bit like the old you know, tree thing. If you've got a super stiff tree and a storm comes along, it's probably gonna snap. However, if you've got a flexy tree like a palm tree, they're just gonna bend over and then flex back into position. However, the deal is you want it to flex back. If you've got a compliant wheel and it flexes and then stays flexed, that's not a strong wheel. So it's always a compromise. You want a wheel that's gonna feel pretty stiff, but will bend at extreme cases, but then return back to shape. So. Yeah, it's just learning how to get that compromise. Markhead92 asks, some people might be afraid to make a fatal mistake. Is there anything that can go really wrong? When building a wheel, you're probably not gonna do anything so wrong that you're gonna break something and can't start again. Now, like I've said in a previous question, I've made mistakes before, I used either the wrong length spokes, got the spokes on the wrong side of the hub, whatever, you know, I've made them. So, in those cases, you've not broken anything. You know, you've obviously built the wheel wrong and it's not gonna work. So best bet is just to completely start again, make sure you're getting spokes in the right side or have got the correct length. And as long as you know, haven't forced anything, you know, stripped a nipple or anything like that, you should be good to go. However, if you do strip a nipple, you know, that's probably one of the biggest errors you can make. I've done it before, it is really annoying. You pretty much have to cut that spoke out 
and put a new one in. And if you don't you know, have any spare spokes, you're pretty stuffed. However, that is you know extreme case. And if you get into that point where you're stripping nipples, you're probably getting too tight tension. So just back it off and yeah, you should be good. All right, I've got a difficult name here. So if I get it wrong, but we've got Al Josh Janak. He asks, will I mess with tie spokes? Like a lot of BMXs do. Okay, titanium spokes. Um, I've never used them. I can't completely say if they're good or not, but I have heard that they can snap a little bit easier. Certainly you don't really see them on many bigger wheels. Uh, I do think that titanium is a little bit more flexible, stretchy than steel. So I kind of imagine your spoke tension might not last very long. I think there's probably a reason why you only see smaller wheels with titanium spokes. They stretch less and they're probably just going to be that little bit stronger. So yeah, I'm not in any hurry to use titanium spokes. I like the reliability of steel, so that's probably what I'll continue using. Okay, Spoa asks, and this is relative to this video, how fast can I lace a wheel not worrying about the trueness? Now, if you're talking about literally just lacing the wheel without actually tightening the spokes or worrying about the trueness at all, actually putting the spokes in, my record is under eight minutes for actually just lacing a wheel. For actually fully building a wheel, including stressing the spokes, getting it completely true, dished, is just over 17 minutes. Now, that was a pretty wall-off wheel. I'd been doing like hundreds of the one type of wheel the same. So I knew them pretty well. I knew pretty much the number of turns I had to do. It just so happens that that rim was from the factory absolutely perfectly straight, which is quite rare. And it just you know went together so smoothly. And I haven't really come that close. Normally it's over 20 minutes. Uh, around 25 minutes is my average. Green FIFO asks, how do you make it so the hub goes further to the left or the right? Now, I assume he means how do you dish the wheel to the left or the right? And if you've ordered or got the correct length spokes, you know, the dish should be pretty much perfect. However, spokes, you normally have a bit of a leeway. If your wheel is slightly out of dish, you can normally bring it back one way or the other. The way to do this is simply undo the spokes one turn or however many number of turns you want to do on one side and then do the equal number of turns on the other side to tighten them. So if you want the rim to go left or right, say if you want to go that way, you loosen the spokes on this side, tighten the spokes on this side, and that will center the wheel further to that side of the hub. Now you can buy different tools to check the dishness. Uh, you don't necessarily need them. They can be pretty handy. Uh, you can use your wheel truing stand to check the, the dishness uh, is straight. And you can also just try it in your frame. Uh, either one works. If you have a tool, that's probably the most accurate way to do it. And if you're building wheels professionally, it's probably the best way to do it. But doing it with a wheel trim stand is you know, pretty good as well. Okay, we've got Ned Blenkiron. He asks, does it matter which way the rim rotates when complete? Uh, it can do, yes. Some rims actually have the spokes off center to the middle of the rim. Now these rims are designed this way because most mountain bike hubs are actually not centered. The flanges aren't in the center of the wheel, which often means you have to dish the wheel over and you might have that uneven spoke tensions. Some rim manufacturers counteract this by offsetting the rim. That means you can have even spoke tensions on either side. So if you do have one of these rims which are offset, then yes, it is vital you get the rim on the correct side. However, if you have a rim which is symmetrical, no, it doesn't really matter which way around you have it. However, I always try to have any writing readable from the drive side of the bike. So if your bike has you know, non-symmetrical stickers on it, if they can be read from the drive side, you're all good. Okay, another name I'm gonna murder, we've got KC or CC uh, asks how to work with pretty thin spokes. They've had trouble getting them to tension and not just twist. Yep, twisting spokes is an issue, especially when you start to get bladed spokes or just super, super butted ones. Now, if you're building bladed spokes, you can actually get little tools which hold the blade straight. So as you're tightening the nipple, the spoke doesn't twist. However, with normal butted spokes, you can't do that. So there will be some twisting going on. Now, this is where you can actually fix this in the wheel building process. This is once you've got the spokes up to tension, 
you actually try and flex the wheel with your elbows. That isn't to stress the wheel, that's to let any spokes that have wound up, you know, unwind again. So as long as you keep on flexing the wheel, you get rid of any twist that's built up, that should uh, help sort your twisting issues. How long was that? 24 minutes, one minute faster. Still under an hour for a pair of wheels, not too bad. So there we go, that is my new pair of wheels. I managed to build them both in under an hour, which is, um, you know, that's, I'm happy with that. And I cannot wait to get these fitted to my bike and get the Chris King buzz noise. <laughs> never get tired of that. So like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you are wanting a more in-depth guide on how to build a, a really strong pair of wheels, check out my previous wheel build tutorial, which I'll link down below. I know it's helped a lot of people out, so hopefully it will help you out too. But this is a long video, so I'm gonna cut it there. So thank you very much for joining me. Thanks to Light Bicycle for the carbon rims and to Chris King for the hubs. I hope you have an absolutely brilliant week and I'll catch you next time. So see you later everyone. Bye-bye.